वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ ब्रांड मैनेजमेंट वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट कोहेसिव रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन अवेयरनेस रेपुटेशन एंड प्रोमिनेंस वेर एन वी मैंशनड वी टॉक अबाउट सम एस्पेक्ट रिलेटेड टू डेफिनेशनल परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ ब्रांड मैनेजमेंट एज वेल लेट्स लुक एट दिस ब्रांड एन एस्पिरेशनल ब्रांड a beautiful watch in this era of you know digital world where in most of us we look at our mobile phones to see the time still if someone is wearing a rolex on her wrist then definitely it matters and that is where you know brand perspective brand persona brand value brand equity all those things they come to fore and and you see when we talk of awareness if you will look at this beautiful advertisement which is available on the web as well and the, the source is mentioned here so you see rolex tried to project or you know in this advertisement at least they tried to project themselves uh, you know change the world we leave to the people who wear them you see so so and, and the, the first line says a rolex will never change the world we leave that to the people who wear them now you see they have built a perspective around rolex watches that you see they are associated with the change makers now that is the perspective uh, you know uh, which uh, a brand may carry or brand may emanate or brand may justify or brand may build up let's see how it goes now you see 2014 global rep track 100 study by reputation institute places rolex in an exceedingly high position as tied for second place on their overall list of 100 most reputable companies and number 1 when it comes to a reputable company as measured by consumers so that is where reputation perspective comes in and we talked about awareness reputation prominence now as a wrist watch a rolex is a more personal item with less regular visibility even though rolex is a major international advertiser uh, although my personal belief is that it has lots of visibility you know you just can't overlook that that brand when it comes in front of you or or whenever you know you are walking on a street somewhere and you, you there there's a shop which has rolex you know so so definitely you you would not never overlook that now then and the perspective is that what is so impressive is that despite all this rolex has succeeded in keeping their product not only in state of high regard among consumers but also on their minds now that is where prominence comes in it remains at the top of your thoughts just in you know basic language if i like to i would like to express then i want to give you a broader perspective of brand management process with a strategic aspect that is strategic brand management process because this is what we are going to look at in due course of time so just keep this sequence in mind strategic brand management involves the design and implementation of marketing programs and activities to build measure and manage brand equity mark these words these are the aspects which we are going to develop in terms of our understanding that is designing and implementation of marketing programs you know probably advertising probably other elements in terms of you know distribution reaching to the customers even pricing we have talked about those things with respect to product management and here i would not be again you know elaborating those but but these elements the marketing programs have a direct relationship with you know brand management strategic brand management and then activities which are closely related to build measure and manage brand equity until i detail upon what exactly equity is in definitional frame just keep this word in in mind as an objective for our understanding in due course of time 
A strategic brand management process has four main steps that is identifying and developing brand plans. I will be elaborating upon this briefly, very briefly, wherein you know brand plans are related to brand positioning model, brand resonance model, brand value chain. We will be uh, going through these in detail, designing and implementing brand marketing programs, measuring and interpreting brand performance, growing and sustaining brand equity, that is developing a brand's architecture, very, very interesting part. Now, again, let us look at this process with, uh, you know, some, some more elaboration, but a bit. And, and this will actually expand in due course of time. Now, when we say identifying and establishing brand positioning and values, it may expand into let us say 4 or 5 elements, mental maps, competitive frame of reference, points of parity and points of difference and differentiation has been a key word in our discussions up till now, core brand associations, brand mantra or a tagline which demonstrates what brand is. Plan and implement brand marketing programs can be elaborated into mixing and matching of brand elements, integrating brand marketing activities, leveraging of secondary associations. Just, just remember these, this, this will be elaborated in due course of time. Measure and interpret brand performance. Now, that is related to brand value chain, which is again a very engrossing kind of a description given by the authors and you would enjoy, uh, you know, learning about this. Then comes in brand audits, again a very interesting concept, brand tracking, brand equity management system, which evolves by itself in due course of time anyways, but, but it is a systematic learning. Then comes in, you know, grow and sustain brand equity, which is related to brand product metrics, brand portfolios and hierarchies, brand expansion strategies, brand reinforcement and revitalization. Now, this would be giving you a brief, you know, sense of or a little, you know, kind of uh, touch of a life cycle perspective and that is what uh, we will talk about when we will be focusing upon, you know, expansion, reinforcement, revitalization and so on. And, and that is the time when you would realize that practically why Dalda is still living with us in our memories, why Sibaka still lives with us in our memories, Binaka still lives uh, with us, Tullu and several other words, you know, are with us till now or many of us, I should not say all. So, then there are some challenges and opportunities. Now, you see unparalleled access to information and new technologies. You see, this is a challenge and an opportunity by itself. So, it is an opportunity which, which actually is a big enabler. And, and Google is an example. Google itself an information technology company has branded itself very well. And it has created a huge prominence around its products and especially, you know, its search engine and uh, then Google Maps and Gmail and several, several other products. And it is a challenge also because you have so much in front of you. So, you know, and, and IMC would tell you how uh, basically, you know, to break the clutter or to use uh, the, the opportunities and so on. Then there are, you know, downward pressure on prices, definitely when, when uh, you know, demand and, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, mass market approach comes in. So, so definitely there is a price element. We have talked about pricing and methods of prices in our product section. Just visit that and that, there you would realize that uh, I have specifically mentioned uh, different types of prices as strategies by themselves. Then ubiquitous connectivity and consumer backlash, sharing information of goods, unexpected sources of competition, this intermediation or and re-intermediation also, alternative sources of information about product quality, winner 
takes all markets that is a wonderful thing which you should remember media transformation and customer centricity this is one of the constants customer centricity because if a brand is not customer centric might not have that kind of an equity though might have that kind of a strength or power or uh, you know and we will look at it you know you you might remember but you might not go to buy it that that is what and you want you 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 might feel happy about something but you might not aspire for example a film actor whom you like but you do not look forward to his or her movies so so that is how things are when 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 we talk of you know uh, emphasizing upon customer centricity and ultimately when you say winner takes all markets the equity becomes established and equity becomes a major reason or a carrier for developing customer loyalty as well now let's look at different outlooks of brand now it's it's very interesting uh, you know this is a paper by hankinson uh, cocking p hankinson hankinson g and cocking p published in 1995 a uh, journal of brand management it's a very interesting uh, you know uh, paper which we have referred to here and uh, you you may read it from the source now the point is that you know this this paper has looked at it with a uh, similar connotation which other authors have built up but in a very interesting format and, and that is why i intended to use uh, you know or, or refer to this paper uh, for our discussion wherein you see outlooks uh, can be divided into visual perceptual positioning added value image and personality parts so let's let's look at them one by one wherein you see if you look at you know an outlook related to a brand in terms of its visual definition so you know name and visual aspects they they come to fore as authors say and and then they project definitions given by very prominent authors who have contributed a lot in the literature for example there is an akers definition there that brand is a distinguishing name and or symbol such as a logo trademark or package design intended to identify the goods or services of either one seller or a group of sellers and to differentiate those goods or services from those of competitors and still to differentiate if there is not much of a competitor competition sorry so that is again you see differentiation again comes in in uh, this definitional frame wherein we are talking of visual perspective here again another very uh, interesting definition brand is the product or service of a particular supplier which is differentiated by its name and presentation and i was referring to you know several products and uh, this date uh, popularly if you just have some apple product around you just look at it and you will realize what we what what this definition is trying to mention here you see definitions focusing on visual identity of the brand lend themselves to legal applications also as the as the paper mentions but up till this stage just you know you you may you may choose or prefer to focus upon the visual aspects associated with a brand then comes in perceptual definitions constituent parts of a brand now again there are authors who have given definitional perspective so uh, and then the paper refers to those authors Uh, one definition says for practically all brands and we are talking of perceptual perspective here for practically all brands there are three sorts of appeal they are all interrelated and each brand has a different blend of three an appeal to the senses an appeal to reason 
and an appeal to emotion. Mm, you talk to a child looking for a chocolate and you talk to someone who wants to gift a chocolate to someone and then you know you uh, I was standing in a, a queue uh, in a city wherein several boarding schools are there and, and that was a Sunday and uh, you know these young kids were brought out for outing basically and these young kids uh, you know they, they were standing in queue to uh, purchase their favorite burgers at, at, a, at a McDonald's outlet and the charm which I could see in their eyes uh, they were having definitely limited uh, money to purchase that because everyone has a specific pocket money given to them to you know spend on their favorite food but and, and there is a lot of discipline and uh, school regulations involved there but, but what I was watching at that particular moment was that you know all these three things you know reason, emotion, senses were coming to fore and, and uh, when, when these kids were they were talking to each other you know I will take this and uh, you take this so that we can share both the things and we can taste both the things you see that is what the perspective is and they were overjoyed when they were standing at a uh, McDonald's outlet. So that is precisely what you know and uh, much more but, but th that is how you know we can explain this aspect. Now again uh, you see this is more disaggregated approach which analyze precise examination of brands anatomical makeup anatomy and brands you know a very interesting kind of a relationship. So, anatomy gives us a different kind of a connotation but, but the authors want to express that it can be looked at with that kind of a perspective as well. Now, if the constituent parts of a brand's appeal can be identified then it is possible to maintain, strengthen or build on those parts that are working and modify those parts that do not. Now, that is where anatomical perspective comes in. We have to focus on which element has to be brought in at the fore related to senses, senses, uh, sorry uh, reason or emotion. Now this definition might therefore be said to be more appropriate in context of strategy formulation and especially when you want to project the product, when you want to actually uh, put up a tagline, when you want to you know uh, build up a storyboard and when you want to give a specific name to let us say uh, you know a combo meal let us say you, you, you have named it a happy meal and then you have named the R as happy meal R or happy R for that matter and that is what we are talking of as far as you know uh, these things go. Then comes in positioning definitions. Now positioning is not and, and uh, my favorite is recent trout and I have talked about in uh, product management as well but, but just to reiterate and then just to elaborate that with the perspective of brand management positioning is not what you do to a product it is what you do to the mind of the prospect you build up a particular kind of an image that is where comes in Dunkin Donuts on one side IIT on the other side and uh, Bond movie on the other side or let us say Batman or Spider-Man or let us say you know and then one of your favorite bikes for example or uh, an aspirational car uh, Defender that is one of my favorites. So now words trigger the meanings which are buried in the mind you see words trigger the meaning which are buried in the mind basically. So again recent trout they have explained it very nicely and this holistic approach focuses on the overall impression created in the minds of consumers by advertising for instance the emphasis in this approach is on the brand name and the strap line which should encapsulate what the brand offers. Dar ke aage jeet hai. I do not know if uh, you know uh, that that uh, specifically uh, you know brings uh, you know comes to you as an example but that actually connotes the way uh, Mountain Dew projects itself and they have positioned themselves very well. So they have done very well and, and successful campaign so, so that is where you know uh, Dar Ke Aage Jeet has 
uh, worked in and, and uh, then there are several uh, you know other kinds of products which have projected themselves with a different kind of a connotation and remember that soft drink, uh, soft beverages is a very, very competitive world wherein uh, taking up market share is not so easy. Added value definitions, now it is a very interesting thing basically. You see this definitional perspective talks about brand is an identifiable product service and when I say identifiable product or the definition says identifiable product. So, again differentiation perspective comes in you see we are carrying why do we want to differentiate so much because that is the only way through which we can retain the customers and that is the biggest effort which one has to make otherwise there are several kinds of search engines you see and effectively uh, doing well if you will look at them. But why Google is very prominent and I am not saying others are not prominent, but why Google is prominent and why Google becomes Googling, noun becomes verb. Have I mentioned this earlier? I have mentioned that in one of uh, my subjects integrated marketing communication I remember, but noun becomes verb is a very interesting thing actually and that is where branding comes in. And I want you to realize this basically and, and if you want to uh, read you know uh, papers on that uh, one of my favorite authors is Professor Herbert Clark. So, Herbert Clark's papers have been uh, you know uh, very uh, contributive in immensely contributive in these kind of things basically and, and that would elaborate a lot about you know what I intend to say. So, I am I am refer uh, I have been referring to his papers on this. So, brand is an identifiable product service person or place augmented in such a way that the buyer or user perceives relevant unique added values which match their needs most closely. Google, Nescafe, Tata Tea, Brookborn, um, Nike keep naming such things. Brand is a combination of an effective product P, distinct identity D and added values A V as Doyle says. Thus, S is equal to P into D into A V a very interesting kind of a thing basically and it is a lovely way to expand you know. Uh, the perspective around brand which we have been talking on added values, distinctiveness in terms of identity and effectiveness of the product. Although a very important thing which we should realize here is that authors they are taking us towards almost a similar direction with a very unique kind of uh, connotation and experiences they, they would have had in the researches they would have done. So, the, the most important thing which you should, we should learn while talking about you know such definitions is that, that they have gone uh, for a very varied kind of a research and a very in depth understanding before giving us a crux on these kind of things. And, and you see that is where the beauty of learning is that you know so many authors are teaching us and taking us towards an understanding which would be very relevant for us as brand practitioners or brand managers in due course of time. Now, both the definitions are set in uh, the context of successful brands and both focus on the brand's added values as the distinguishing feature of one brand as opposed to another. Such definitions also highlight the unique nature of a brand, uniqueness. So, distinctiveness going towards uniqueness. Now, comes in image aspect. There were six, so we are reaching to the fifth image definitions. Now, the concept of brand image is not a uniform one as the author says. Consumers have feelings, ideas and attitudes. I have talked about these elements uh, you know, in uh, previous discussions also. So, I will not be uh, referring to detailed definitions of how feelings, ideas and attitudes are defined. If you want to go for further uh, deliberations on uh, you know these words, 
so you may choose to refer to American Marketing Association website and standard text on this. So you will find that uh, uh, marketing management book by Philip Kotler also uh, talks about it, then Keller's book also talks about it and then uh, there are several other standard texts available wherein you know these definitions are there. So consumers have feelings, ideas and attitudes about brands that constituted an image and that this image was crucial to their purchase choice. They are carrying you know an image in their minds and have you know feelings, ideas and attitudes as the main constituents of that image and then you know they they want to realize that image actually. So, for example, you know a dream location, then there is congruity between a brand's image and the actual or ideal self image of the user. Mark these words actual or ideal self image of the user, then the brand is more likely to be used and enjoyed. So, again a very uh, you know interesting definition and you see uh, this is associated with semiotic approach wherein brand can be seen in terms of signs whose meaning forms the consumer's brand image and famous examples are Apple, Nike and several others. So, so that is that is again a very relevant perspective and remember I talked about brand elements and mentioned symbol and signs as the elements of a brand. Now again going for symbolic elements in image definitions, often brands are associated with symbols either socially extant or created by for the advertiser or for the advertiser. The effort to differentiate the brand is psychologically rather than physically based as Fraser says and then there is an element in terms of image definitions which, which talks about a balance between cognitive and effective aspects. A brand's image is what people think and feel about it and those thoughts and feelings will not cannot be universally identical. Now we are going towards how an individual will decipher the brand. So, that is that is the perspective which comes to fore. Now, the image lies in the mind of the beholder basically. Uh, the, the famous quote is that the beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. How relevant it is I am not sure, but the definitional frame talks about the image lies in the mind of the beholder and is conditioned at least as much by the nature of the beholder as by the nature of the object itself. So, the persona which you want to uh, carry in your mind in terms of a particular brand must be realized by you. So, there should be a resonance you know as far as the cognitive and effective aspects go. It should match and there can be a difference between the thought process of individuals in terms of one particular brand remember this. Then there are personality definitions. Since the 1980s the concept of brand image has given way to personification theories in which brands are described as if they had personalities. Very, very interesting, very important thing. We have talked about product carrying personalities and I mentioned about Barbie as one of the most prominent examples and then there are several, you see there are uh, apparels which can be looked upon with the perspective of personality. So, so for example, Levi Strauss and then Levi's jeans and then six pocket jeans and then several other kinds of and then that uh, that particular product actually has a personality perspective and when we are talking of that product in terms of brand definitely personality is a prominent, prominent element. Alt and Griggs developed a brand personality inventory BPI that consists of a questionnaire that includes 40 items relating to personality attributes and values like homely, cheeky, determined and mean or several kinds of you know how a customer defines or describes you know for example someone says this this ice cream is wonderful someone says it's lovely someone says it's tasty whichever way 
and this multi dimensional approach allows the brand to be placed in its competitive set so that is where you know personality definitions come to four where to from here each of the six categories of brand definitions add something to the understanding of the concept each in some way lends itself to at least one aspect of brand management such as strategy formulation creative execution market research or targeting remember these three elements we will be uh, having a deeper look into these when we talk about other concepts especially brand value chain to bring these strands together a brand management checklist system has been put together based upon what the authors regard as a more all embracing definition of a brand and i'll just you know pause here as far as our discussion on brand and brand management goes i'll be coming back to you with lots of insights on brand proposition in my next session just keep watching brands and the magic of branding all around you i'll be joining back till then goodbye